sometimes we can think, oh, well, they're anointed because they can sing. They're gifted because uh, they could preach. And we're looking at maybe gifts that are highlighted or maybe on platform, singing, preaching, teaching, prophesying. But do you know that there are natural and supernatural gifts that Christ is giving the body? Paul over and over and over again says, the gifts I've given you are to be exercised in the context of community. It's not just supposed to be for you to be applauded by yourself. It's for the good right. of my church. And so that people will hear the gospel. How have y'all seen gifts, both in yourselves, but also in your congregation where you go, oh man, this is the bomb. Because when our gifts are given better together, if you will, in the context of community, I just feel like that's that's the purpose. We'll dial into specificity of gifts, but I think they they are really meant to be exercised in the body. That's what Paul says here. They're about church. So I think when Paul references body, I think it's important for us even just to take an inventory of our own body, right. our hands, our elbows, our pinky toes, right. uh, our neck, and take a look at it, if one aspect of my body was disformed, dismembered, um, there's an inability to move it, it would affect the rest of right. my body. So when Paul talks right. about us, the church being a body, God has uniquely gifted us gifts and in Ephesians 4, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 13, we see how Paul is talking about spiritual gifts. And there's a difference between talent and gifts. I'd love to talk about that in a second. Pick your brain about it, Lisa. But when Paul is talking about spiritual gifts, this is God-breathed gifts that God is giving us for not just to serve the body, but to be witnesses of God's supernatural healing power moving on the earth here right now. So one of the things that I love is when I talk to people about discovering their gifts and people are like, oh, I don't have a gift. I don't have a gift. I don't have a gift. But gosh, I really just love volunteering. I just love serving God's people. Do you know that that's a spiritual gift? Yeah. Oh, I don't have any gifts. I don't have any gifts, but I just, oh, gosh, my heart aches for people who are, uh, who need compassion and have experienced loss. You've got the gift of mercy. Right. Oh, I don't have any gifts. I don't have any gifts, but the Lord's blessed me with finances and I love being generous. Do you know that you have the gift of generosity? And when your gift and my gift come together, we form the body. When we are all working with our gifts, we get to be a light. We get to be a voice. We get to be a witness of God here on earth. That's why I am so excited about people discovering the spiritual gifts that God has given them. Again, many of us are talented. Many of us are born into great situations, whether it's affluence or, or physical uh, ability to run fast or maybe even sing. But when God touches your talent, when God's supernatural gifting touches your talent, my God, you will be unstoppable. Yeah. And not for your glory or good, that's but for right. God's glory and God's glo that's good. Right. So I love when the body yes. all comes together. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's so good, Bianca. I love that. And I love how the Bible says that um, that we are the body and Jesus is the head. And really we're, we're meant to support the head, which is Jesus. And he can move us how he wants and turn us how he wants. And I am so thankful that there's a place where people can learn about the gifts and learn, like you said, Bianca, it's such a safe place. And I think that as we operate together and learn what it means to to struggle together. Because I mean, I don't know if you guys have, I'm right now training for a half marathon. I just turned 40. Oh, wow. And yes. I was like, I feel like, I feel like a half marathon is something that a 40 year old should do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like my body, I'm honestly like, my body can do awesome things. This is so cool. Like I'm training. I just ran 10 miles last week for the first time. And when your body's in unison, when you're fueling, when you're putting fuel, good fuel in your body and you're training and you're stretching and everything, it's like your body can do awesome things. So in the body of Christ, it's no different. Like to, if we're all operating in the way that God's called us to, it's a beautiful harmony of us being meant to work together. And so um, this is amazing. I love Lisa, you were talking a little bit about um, the fact that I mean, this is my language that essentially in some cases people get scared of even this whole conversation oh, yeah. because we have used the spiritual gifts to entertain the church rather than build the church. And if you're trying to entertain the church or to 
uh, profiteer of it. The very thing that God has given us to help one another, to serve one another, to build up the body of Christ, to bring it to maturity, um, you know, into into the fullness of who we're called to be. Um, I think you end up having a very crippled and maimed body um, when you're trying to use the gifts for either entertainment or to exploit God's people yeah. as opposed to serve God's people. Yeah. And I think we're in a new day. This is why I'm glad we're having this conversation. And even uh, all the women on this, we're better together because we come from all the different streams of the church. Yeah. Um, people like Laurie and I have, you know, we've we've been there and done that. We've seen quite a few things in our lifetime, I think. Laurie, would you say we've seen a few things? Yeah. You know what? What I love, though, is if you get a hold of, of we're all a part of the body of yeah. Christ. Paul yeah. was telling them, look, this is the way to do it. This, your gifts are only to, 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 you need to strive to excel in building up the body of Christ through your gifts. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Don't make it so weird and, and, <sighs> When we've been through a lot of weird. I've seen a lot of weird, and it's like, ah. Uh, and if I felt like maybe there was somebody who didn't understand and maybe wasn't saved and didn't know the fullness right. of Christ, that was going to seem really weird right now. And I know the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, and He does all things in decency and in order, and, and I love that about Him. He's not going to make it weird He's going to move powerfully right. so many times, right. but it's not going to just be weird. Right, which you know? may appear and I, weird. And I think that's where sometimes we get hung up is yes. when the Holy Spirit yes. falls and there's tongues of flame like fire and acts to it. But because that was stunning. That was shocking. But I think sometimes in an effort to seem holy, I was with a woman not too long ago, a young woman who who really wanted to pray over me. And she was so well-intentioned, but her well-intentioned was weird, but her heart was pure. She just had seen some things and she thought this will make everybody think I'm really mature. And I thought she'll grow to the point of realize I think this young woman really did have the gift of intercession. And as God matures that in her, some of the weirdness is going to slough off as she matures. I'd love Bianca in light of that because I think it was profound when you said there's a difference between talent and spiritual gift. Now, if you have a spiritual gift, you will have you will have some capacity in that area. So I think it'd be good for you to talk about where, what's the parallels, Bianca, between a talent and a spiritual gift, and where would you go, okay, this is more talent, this is obviously more charismata or pneumata, this is spirit-breathed. Uh, first of all, when you speak Greek, I get chills. <laughs> so I know Chris is Greek, but do not deny the gift upon you, honey, to speak your Greek. I love it. Uh, Amen. When Paul <laughs> wrote to the church, he said, my brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ill-informed when it comes to spiritual gifts. This is the power of this conversation that we get to have now, that we are going to learn from each other. And given our different backgrounds, uh, maybe a little bit more conservative, maybe a little bit charismatic, we get to have our conversations today at the table and learn from each other. So some of the things that we might say, um, we might have been trained or taught a little bit differently, but at this table, we're going to learn from each other, which is very, very exciting. So... I have a little bit more of a conservative background, and um, I met Christine several years ago. God, Chris, I think it's been 10 years. Oh, yes, yeah. 10 years ago I met Chris. And it was like almost like she exposed and opened a whole new world to charismata, to Numa, that that made me dive into scripture more to see what do I believe? What have I been taught? What do I want to explore more about the gifts of the spirit? Well, let me tell you something. Um, there's two women that have a profound effect on me understanding the spirit of God and the power of living and walking the spirit of God. One woman's name is Christine Kane, and she's on this show today, which is so exciting and honored to be able to have this conversation. And the first woman was a woman by the name of Kathy Slater. She was a white haired woman that had white geriatric shoes. There was nothing cool or swaggy or dope about Kathy Slater, but my God, when she opened the word of God and she was speaking about the power that we possess as the people of God, followers of God, that was dripping off of her tongue like honey. And I, there was something about her that said, I want what she has. I had been raised in church my whole life. I had heard about Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but I was not walking in the manner of being 
a spiritful woman of God. Right. So when we talk about gifts, I'm going to get to the point, I'm going to get to the point. We talk about gifts. I think sometimes we can think, oh, well, they're anointed because they can sing. They're gifted because uh, they could preach. And we're looking at maybe gifts that are highlighted or maybe on platform, singing, preaching, teaching, prophesying. But do you know that there are natural and supernatural gifts that Christ is giving the body? And so I don't want one gift to seem better than the other. Right. So let's talk about talents and gifts. I'll try to do this as easy as possible. Um, when you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. The Greek word is en, E-N. That's a Greek word I know, Chris. <laughs> the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. And then most of us will encounter an epi experience. This is the act two that Epi is the Greek word for upon. This is the upon experience. So when I say yes to Christ, his spirit comes inside of me and I am imbued with his spirit and his spiritual gifts. We're gonna talk about fruit of the spirit and gifts of the spirit a little bit later. Y'all, I could talk about this for all day, every day. But the difference between a talent and a gift is that talent is something that you could be born into. A talent is something that was given to you at birth. A spiritual gift is given to you at new Amen. birth when you say yes Amen. to Jesus. And God can take a talent and, 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 and his spirit can take it to a new level. I know as a kid, I always loved to talk. I could talk, I could talk to anybody. Yeah. But when I started walking in the spirit of God, there was something, a newness where God took my ability, my talent to talk to open up the word of God and expound the word of God. So my, my talent for talking turned into a desire and outworking of teaching God's word supernaturally. So one happens at birth, spiritual gifts are at new birth. Yeah. Talent is something that might be uh, cultivated as a child. Maybe you are naturally fast and your parents give you a coach and you can run faster. That's a talent and that could be groomed. A spiritual gift, you, you don't, the only person that can groom your spiritual gift is God and we, if we're looking at this as a visual of a sword, the more that we use our gifts, the sharper our sword will get, the more we know how to wield our sword. For those of y'all listening who I just sense in my spirit that some of y'all have been told your whole life that you're not worth much, that you're not very gifted. I believe shame is gonna lift this week through these conversations. You're gonna recognize that if you're in Christ, you are imbued with the same spirit who raised Jesus from death back to life. You are extraordinarily gifted through the Holy Spirit and God has plans for you that are probably far beyond your wildest dreams. I really think God is gonna use this week to lift shame off some of y'all and to, to open you up to the divine purpose He has for you that is a good purpose. It's a great world-changing purpose. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.